Hi, I'm Jeff Dixon. Welcome back once again to Conspiracy Cases, where we are looking, in this particular case, at the Apollo landing moon hoax, or the Apollo moon landing hoax. You pick out what you want to call it. And we're looking specifically at evidence that those who believe that um, the NASA moon landing was a setup, a cover-up, designed to help the United States win the space race, but yet in reality, it took place out in the desert in a Hollywood type studio somewhere out in Nevada. Exhibit C, if you were to look at the pictures, you look at the images that came from the moon, you will notice that there are no stars in the photos. Examine them, look at them, look closely at them you see no stars in the background of those photos. So another favorite argument of the moon landing doubters is that there are no stars visible in the photos that were taken on the moon by the astronauts. If they were really on the moon, so goes the thought, shouldn't there be stars shining brightly in the background? In that brilliant, dark, nighttime sky. NASA offers a simple explanation. The camera's exposure settings were adjusted for the bright lunar surface washing out the distant stars. And so, the cameras just weren't set to be able to pick that up. NASA claims it's all about the cameras, not some grand conspiracy to hide its stars. But for some, it's hard to believe, isn't it, that the astronauts wouldn't have just snapped at least one shot out into the Milky Way to catch the brilliance of the nighttime sky and the stars? And, and believe it or not, this is one of the most compelling arguments because what if it were you or me that were there? This once in a lifetime visit to the moon to walk on the lunar surface, especially for the very first time? I mean, wouldn't you have been able to figure out a way to snap a photograph? where you could have at least caught something. But yet, in the NASA photos, there are no stars. Episode, or episode, uh, evidence D, the technology gap. Skeptics will also argue that the technology available in 1969 simply wasn't advanced enough to get men to the moon. They claim that NASA didn't have the computing power, and if the mission had, would have been attempted, it would have ended in failure or a cover-up. Don't believe me? Well, let's just say some theorist looks at your smartphone today and says, well, that's more powerful than the technology that they used when they landed on the moon. And you know what? They would be accurate. Your smartphone has more technology crammed into that little device and they have all the computers on board the NASA spacecraft. And it begs the question, how could they pull it off? How did it happen? Or did it happen at all? Now, there are a lot of others. And if you really want to dig into this and you're a, a conspiracy theorist, you can go down the rabbit hole for miles and find all sorts of evidence and arguments for and against the fact that we really did or didn't go to the moon. We're going to leave the evidence with you at that point. And next time when we come back, we're going to learn some lessons about what we can take away from the conspiracy case, no matter what you believe. Because it's always about the takeaway and where you find truth in the midst of the story. And so I look forward to joining you next time as we continue to look at the conspiracy cases.